Good day, Crime Talk aficionados. My name is Scott Reich, and this is Crime Talk, the most fact-driven, unbiased, true crime channel. Let's get straight to the docket today. First, Aiden Fucci, Plain Games. A hero's wife speaks out. The South Dakota Attorney General is at it again. A judge says no past conduct of Ahmaud Arbery is coming in at trial. More charges for that FBI sex crimes agent. Tweeting gets a guy five years in prison. And then finally, our dumb criminal contestant of the day. Let's talk about it. Good day, Crime Talk aficionados. This is Crime Talk. My name is Scott Reich. Thanks for watching. If you haven't done so, please hit that subscribe button as well as the bell so that you receive notifications of when we go live or put up new content. For those of you who missed our live program last night, you can go back and watch the video. And for our Patreons who were not able to participate, you too have those links as well. All right, aficionados, it's that time. Yep. Please go to crimetalkprep.com and you can get four weeks of an emergency food kit at $50 off and no shipping. This is a huge deal, okay? Look at the people in New Orleans right now. Natural disaster hits, the power is off. I think it was just coming back on, but guess what? Those individuals, they're on their own. And after the natural disaster, or some sort of significant event happens is not the time to run to the grocery store because there's nothing there. You have to prepare. Do the adult thing. Be prepared for anything that comes your way. Go to crimetalkprep.com. Get your four-week emergency food kit, $50 off, and free shipping. You'll be happy you did. All right, let's get straight to the docket. Aiden Fucci. He's playing games. Now, if you may recall, Aiden Fucci is being charged as an adult for the murder in the violent stabbing of 13-year-old classmate Tristan Bailey. His pretrial hearing was scheduled for this morning but was postponed to October 28th due to some technical difficulties. During the pretrial hearing this morning, Aiden Fucci was seen on screen for about 20 seconds wearing his uh, orange jumpsuit and had a confused expression on his face. Fucci was led into a room with a phone so that he could hear the court proceedings and appeared to be frightened. He looked around the room with a confused and dazed expression. A deputy came into the room, took the phone receiver off the wall and handed it to the young Mr. Fucci, who then flipped his long hair back and continued looking disoriented as he held the receiver to his ear. He then started rocking back and forth in his seat. He could be heard on the video recording saying, please don't let the demons take my soul. The demons are going to take my soul away. The demons steal my soul. I don't know what's going on. What's going on? Why are you here? I see him in the What's going on? What the heck going on? Why am, why am I here? I just want to talk to my mom and dad. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Why are you here? He asks multiple times, what's going on? Why is he here? And that he just wants to talk to his mom and dad. Well, Fucci's lawyers requested and filed a waiver of speedy trial, and the next court date is now set for late October. Ladies and gentlemen, young Aiden Fucci is playing games. His attorneys, if they believe that he had mental health issues or was not competent to proceed, they would have had an ethical duty to raise that issue. Based upon what went down this morning, it was clear that the attorneys were somewhat surprised as well and that he is playing games. What, does he think that somehow he's going to be found not competent and the case is just going to go away? No. The mental health professionals 
can spot malingering a mile away, just as this little old street lawyer can as well. I've said this before, it's always the crazy ones that don't want to go to the mental health hospital. It's always the malingerers that are trying to get there. I think Aiden Fucci is trying to get there. Aiden Fucci's mother, who's also facing charges in regards to covering up uh, the murder that her son is accused of by basically washing his clothes, her court appearance was also continued as well. Next on the docket, a hero's wife speaks out. Now, Karina Olguin and her husband, Dustin Wakefield, took their one-year-old son and some relatives to an outdoor cafe in Miami Beach for dinner. Wakefield was fatally shot at the cafe by a man claiming that he was high on mushrooms and felt empowered. Now, Tamarius Davis, who's 22, was arrested at the scene and charged with murder. Davis originally had his gun pointed at Dustin Wakefield's one-year-old son, and Wakefield was shot, saving his son's life. Dustin Wakefield's wife recalled the event in an interview, saying she yelled, Dustin, the baby, and she says Dustin got up, got Eli, and took him from the grandmother. Family members say that Dustin stood in front of the shooter and shielded his family. Dustin was begging for his life, Olguin said. He was like, I have a son, please. He's only one years old. Through tears, Olguin says that she wants her husband to be remembered as a hero and as a courageous man, as an amazing, loving father. Wakefield's mother adds that in memory of her son, she asks everyone to do something good like he would. Smile at a stranger, give a hug to somebody, see the person in front of you. Really see them. Don't let this world desensitize you to what love is. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, this young man is a hero. And I hope that the man accused of his murder, pretty straightforward, let's hope he gets a life sentence. Next on the docket, the South Dakota Attorney General is at it again. Do you remember the South Dakota Attorney General, Jason Ravsborg? Remember, well, he was ticketed just the other day for going 57 in a 35 mile per hour zone last week, just days before he pled no contest to traffic charges that killed a pedestrian last year. He was charged with speeding on other roadways, a second degree misdemeanor, and fined $177.50. Now, as you may recall, last Thursday, Ramsborg pled no contest to a pair of second-degree misdemeanors for a crash last year that killed Joseph Bover. Now, what is offensive about this is, as you may recall, the South Dakota Attorney General, Jason Ramsborg, killed this pedestrian, didn't report it until the next day, and he thought it was a deer. Well, until the police confronted him over the fact that the dead man's glasses were inside his car. That's right, when his head came through the windshield. The attorney general also had his phone for forensically researched, and what did it reveal? That he was reading conservative websites from behind the wheel at the time of the crash. And he received the world's softest set of misdemeanor charges, and guess what? He paid $1,000 for killing a guy, all the while retaining his post as the state attorney general. Like I said, you thought this case had reached its peak outrageousness and ridiculousness? Well, until you find out that he got this other ticket. Boy, was I wrong. Now, maybe somebody in South Dakota will have the guts to say, Ravsborg needs to go. If he won't resign, he should be impeached. Clearly, he is the classic example of rules for thee, but not for me. He just doesn't think the law applies to him. And as the top law enforcement official in the state of South Dakota, he needs to go. Next on the docket, Ahmad Aubrey. We haven't talked about this case in a while, but guess what? A Georgia judge ruled that defense attorneys for the men charged with killing Ahmad Aubrey will not be allowed to present evidence of the slain black man's past legal problems when their clients stand trial for his murder. Arbery had pled guilty to a charge of carrying a gun 
into his high school in 2013. Police chief for the Glynn County School System testified that Arbery tried to run from the officers on foot, but stopped when they drew their guns at him. Arbery was also arrested in 2017 for trying to steal a TV from a Walmart and he pled guilty. He was on probation for that offense at the time of his death. Now, the father and son uh, defendants, Gregory and Travis McMichael, and their neighbor, William Roddy Bryan Jr., are awaiting trial this fall for chasing down and killing 25-year-old Arbery last year as he ran into their neighborhood outside coastal Brunswick, Georgia. Now, the attorneys for the McMichaels wanted the jury to hear about Arbery's past run-ins with law enforcement, including these two arrests, to cast doubt on the prosecutor's contention that he was merely an innocent jogger running through this subdivision. And defense attorneys say that McMichaels suspected Arbery was a burglar after he was recorded by video cameras inside a home under construction. Well, Travis McMichael's lawyer says he shot Arbery in self-defense. Now, defense attorneys say that the white men reasonably suspected that Arbery had committed a crime when they began the pursuit that ended ultimately in Mr. Arbery's death. The character of the victim is neither relevant nor admissible in a murder trial, the judge wrote in his ruling. Defense attorneys have also asked the judge to let them introduce evidence Arbery suffered from a mental illness. The judge has not ruled on that request just yet. We'll see how that turns out. Jury selection in the case is scheduled to start on October 18th of this year. Now, understand, ladies and gentlemen, just as a defendant has a right to be tried on these charges and these charges alone, you cannot bring in the bad character evidence of a witness or a defendant just because you actually have to have some nexus to it. And it's already been determined that Arbery had not committed a crime and under the self-help statute uh, that the McMichaels were relying upon, they're going to have a tough go of this. Just like if they had a bad past in their criminal history, the defendants wouldn't want that to come in. They'd want to be tried on these facts and these facts alone. It cuts both ways. The judge made the right decision in this particular case. Now, remember, if the prosecution opens the door, there's always a possibility that that evidence could come in. Or if the McMichaels testify, they may say that they were aware of these other circumstances and that's why they were perhaps in fear for their life. However, I think the tape shows something rather different, and I think that um, they're not going to be justified under the law uh, that they're trying to claim that uh, they were trying to catch a fleeing felon from a crime scene. No crime had been committed. All right, next on the docket, more charges for that FBI agent, that's right, who was involved in the Sex Crimes Against Children unit. Ugh, don't you just hate when that happens? Well, the 51-year-old FBI agent, David Harris, who specialized in sex crimes against children, now has another warrant out for his arrest in Florida for, guess what, alleged sex crimes. The Franklin County Sheriff's Office issued an arrest warrant for David Harris with regard to allegations that surfaced back in February of this year. There are also allegations against him in Florida, Louisiana, and Texas. Harris was previously arrested in Louisiana and charged with aggravated crimes against nature, indecent behavior with juveniles, obscenity, and witness intimidation. The Orleans Parish charges against Harris include sexual battery and attempted third-degree rape. The recent warrant for Mr. Harris alleges events that occurred during a July 2019 family vacation in St. George Island, where Harris came to St. George Island on vacation with family and friends in July of 2019, and at this time exposed his genitalia in a lewd and lascivious manner to a then 14-year-old female. Records also obtained show that Harris issued government electronic devices that he used to have conversations with underage females 
regarding his sexual preferences and admitting to his exploits. Harris also allegedly exposed himself to a 13-year-old girl in Tyler, Texas, at his home in Prairieville, Louisiana. Now, Harris graduated from West Point and was a colonel in the United States Army Reserves, and he's reportedly been dismissed from the FBI and his reserve status remains under review. That is an absolute tragedy, um, but it just shows you that it can happen to anyone regardless of their credentials in life, so to speak, Oftentimes those are used to help build trust among people and to think that they are somehow beyond reproach when it comes to allegations made against them. Let's take a quick recess before we continue on. Please go to crimetalksearch.com, sign up for a background subscription service. You'll be happy you did. If there's anyone out there you were ever curious about, what was in their background, now is the time to do it. If you're going to get involved with somebody, now is the time to do it. When you go to crimetalksearch.com, you put in the name, literally millions of public records are searched, and a report is generated. And it's going to give you a report. If they have multiple social media accounts, you're going to find it. If they have multiple phone numbers, multiple email addresses, it's going to be found. And more importantly, you're going to get information regarding criminal history. Hopefully the person you're searching has none whatsoever, but if it's there, it's going to be found. You're going to get everything you'd want to know, whether you're going into business or whether you're going into a personal relationship, you're going to be able to find out the information you want to know. So go to crimetalksearch.com, sign up today. You'll be happy you did. Tweeting can get you five years in prison. Well, not if you do it the right way, but if you do illegal things, it could. A Florida man will serve five years in federal prison for tweeting, guess what? Yeah, child pornography. That'll do it. That's right. Well, and he also tagged elected officials, media outlets, and public figures in his tweets. Yeah, that's a problem. So in June of 2017, Marshawn Browning created numerous Twitter accounts so he could post child sex abuse images. I'm not sure what he was thinking. Well, when he would tweet these images, Browning tagged numerous politicians and public figures. Browning's tweets also contained personalized messages for each person who was tagged in the explicit images. Well, United States District Court Judge Mary Scriven sentenced the 24-year-old Browning to five years in federal prison along with 10 years of supervised release for his crime. For those of you who don't recall, supervised release in the federal system is basically parole. This case all began when law enforcement searched uh, his residence where they found more than 160 images and one video of sex abuse towards a toddler. A news anchor who had been tagged in his tweets said they were scared for their life because of the horrifying pictures. Now, Browning had pled guilty to three counts of disturbing and possession of back in April of 2021. That's stupid, and I think he has a problem. Maybe it was a cry for help. All that cry got him, though, was five years in prison, where he probably belongs. The mere fact that he was possessing images of toddlers in such a nature of that is disturbing beyond belief. Next on the docket, our dumb criminal contestant of the day. Please meet Taylor Beverly. He's 22. He was on his first date with a female passenger. His own words, in an attempt to show off to his date, um, he was arrested following a high-speed police chase. That's one way to impress a girl. Now, Beverly ran through a red light Saturday night while driving a white 2017 Suzuki with his date in the passenger seat. Beverly allegedly looked back and made eye contact with the nearby Clearwater Police Department as he raced by. Beverly was going well over 100 miles an hour and weaving in and out of traffic, running multiple red lights before police ultimately arrested him. As he was being advised of his rights, he confessed that he was just trying to show off for his date. Well, the woman apparently wasn't that impressed because she told police she was screaming at him to stop and noted that it was their first date. Well, Beverly has been charged with felony, fleeing of police officers at a high speed, wanton disregard for the safeties of others, and was ultimately released from jail 
uh, Sunday after posting a $10,000 bond. Mr. Beverly, you are a dumb criminal contestant of the day. You could be the winner for the week. Now you may ask yourself, what did you do to get here, Mr. Beverly? Well, first of all, you had your date, you were trying to impress her. Maybe you could have done some sort of wheelie going down the street uh, with her on the back. Something along those lines would have been you know, a little less dangerous, right? Not really, no. You had your date on the back, you eluded police, and then you admitted to it. All stupid things that you did, Mr. Beverly. And guess what? If there's one charge where even if you have no criminal history, the chances of you going to prison go up exponentially, that's right. Felony eluding from a police officer because it is so dangerous and so many times it results in a crash where people are seriously injured or killed. So Mr. Beverly, that's why you are a dumb criminal contestant of the day. Now, keep track if you're playing along at home. We'll have a recap as the week continues. But Mr. Beverly is probably rapidly approaching the podium for the dumb criminal contestant of the week. We'll see if he can hold it off. Just when you think you have found the dumb criminal, somebody comes up with something else. All right, that's all we have for you today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Crime Talk.